Hello, and thank you for joining us for this dose of virtual vitamin Z. My name is Sandy, and I am joined today by Betsy. Hi! And we are joined you today by a video sponsored by Meyer, and we are so grateful for Meyer's support to be able to continue to provide these videos. Today, we are at the Grizzly Bear Habitat. So let me flip my camera around so you can see who we are talking about today. We are talking about our three grizzly bears. They're brothers. They've lived here, I can't believe it, for almost 10 years. They're nine and a half years old. And they're enjoying a little frozen fish treat right now. So you said they're, they're nine and a half years old? They're nine and a half. They came here in December of 2011. Okay. And they have an interesting story behind them. They were cubs and their mother was shot and killed illegally up in Alaska. So they were orphans and wandering around near the town of Anchorage. And they sought refuge, you know, in the woods and we we're even seen near people's homes. There's been a report of someone saw them on their back porch. So U.S. Fish and Wildlife was able to um, capture the three bears and they spent a little bit of time at the Alaska Zoo before they came here in December of 2011. That's a really neat story. So I have to ask, how did they get here from Alaska? Um, I was actually very privileged to go up there to Anchorage and pick them up. And they each traveled in individual crates and they were very little at that time. They were only around 100 pounds. And we flew on a big FedEx cargo plane all the way back from Anchorage. We stopped off in Indianapolis for a few minutes and then we came up to Detroit. And they did great on that flight. They just took a nap, you know, they did awesome. And now, like I said, they were around 100 pounds when they were that size 10 years ago. You said they were little. I think they were little. My, my dog is, a, is like 100 pounds and he's That's big. That's little for a grizzly bear. <laughs> These boys are now close to eight, 900 and oh even goodness. maybe even 1,000 pounds. Here comes one bear up looking for some more treats. So these three are brothers and they're 10 years old in you know human years it's hard to know exactly what they are in, in bear years but they're kind of like three teenagers okay three teenage boys they make a mess of their room okay they don't clean up after themselves very well <laughs> do they so i think about teenage boys do they eat a lot too they eat a lot yes they do eat a lot they are you know omnivores they, so that means they eat a little bit of meat and a little bit of plants so they'll eat a little bit of meat and they like uh, good fruits and veggies each day. One of their favorites is like a cooked yam or something like that or a carrot or even a whole head of romaine lettuce per bear. Wow. Gone. And they get um, bones a couple times a week. And they're actually having a special treat of a frozen coconut right now. Ooh. So it's really good. They normally wouldn't find a coconut in the wild, but what they would do is use their teeth and their claws to get into those prey items and find their food. So we're, they're using their teeth and claws here so they can get into their food and use some natural behaviors. And see, he's almost standing on it. He's trying yeah. to crush it with his foot too. Well, if at a thousand pounds, I imagine that would be pretty... It doesn't last long. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, the, coconut, yeah. <laughs> the bear usually wins against the coconut. Do the... Animal care staffs share the same space as the bears? They do not share the same space as the bears. These guys are um, very wild animals, even though they're here in this setting, um, even though they were brought here when they were young cubs, they've grown up big, you know, at a thousand pounds each. It's not safe for the keeper staff to be in there with these bears. So they do not share the same space at all. So you, you told me that they're, they're kind of like teenagers and that they um, are very active in their habitat. They are active. Um, uh, today is a little bit warm, so they're kind of just taking it easy a little bit. But they love to play and to jump around. One of them was actually swimming in the pool a little while ago. They have a beautiful pool with a nice waterfall. And it's about six yeah. or seven feet deep. So they can get underneath the water if they want to. There's a little shelf on the side that we call like the sun shelf. That's only about three feet deep. So they kind of sit there and soak. Okay. And just like the cool water. And it's almost been almost two years since we expanded this habitat for them. So we've opened up, we literally tore down some walls and opened up this space. So these bears, as they grow, had more room to roam around. So they have lots of land space, grass, trees, 
fallen logs, fallen trees of what they normally would interact with in the wild. They even have a little cave over there if they want to go to sleep, take a little nap during the day. And sometimes they dig what we call a little day bed. If you see the bear right in front of you, he's mm -hmm. kind of standing here in a little depression in the ground or he's walking over to right. one. They kind of dig down a little bit, get to the cool soil and lay there for the day. Okay. Do the bears have different personalities? Um, sometimes they do, yeah. I mean, they are all individuals. We want to take care of each one as an individual animal and see to everybody's needs. Um, Boo is, their names are Mike, Boo, and Thor, and they were named by the U.S. Fish and Wildlife. Boo actually <laughs> was captured on Halloween, so that's how he got his name. And Thor, I think it's because of the Avengers movies, was popular at sure. that time. And Mike, I'm not sure, but we just kept their names. They're great names for these guys. Boo is the smallest, and I say smallest, only about you know, 50 pounds less than the other guys, but he kind of runs the show. He's the little guy, but he kind of runs everything. And Mike and Thor just kind of hang out and do their own thing sometimes. It's not uncommon to see all three of them playing together or maybe just two of them playing together, even in the pool or napping together. That's really neat. So if I'm a guest and I'm coming and I to the habitat and I don't see them, what do you recommend? Sometimes they're more active earlier in the morning. In the heat of the day, they kind of seek refuge um, maybe in the shade. So you can look into the caves of the rock work that's in the back, or maybe the cave right over there um, that one of the bears is standing in front of. And a lot of times on these hot days, they are playing in the pool. So you might just need to walk on our elevated walkway that's in the, behind us, and you can have a better vantage point of the habitat, and they might be even in the water. Okay, that's good to know. Mm -hmm. Sometimes when I walk by the habitat, I see different different trees in here. I see different items. Why, why is that? We want to make their environments as complex as we can. So they're interacting with different things during the day. Um, a couple times a year, we actually have a crane come and put in new trees, new deadfall that you see. So things are ever changing in their environment as they would encounter in the wild. And we even sometimes put the trees vertically, like the, you see this one in the in the pool right there. So they would interact with something like that, you know, strip the bark off of that, maybe try to break the branches. That's one of their favorite things to do is break branches. Whenever <laughs> we put in new trees, they have to go check everything out, sniff everything, maybe mark it a little bit, and then they try to break and snap off the branches. <laughs> like a teenage boy is destro destroying something. Exactly. Do you happen to know what the grizzly bear conservation status is? They, in the lower 48, they are classified as threatened. Okay. In Alaska, where their numbers are more numerous, I don't believe they have an exact classification right now. Um, but in the lower 48, because of habitat loss and fragmentation of the species, you know, they're living in smaller and smaller groups, they are classified as threatened. Okay. What can people do to help make sure that these animals are around for future generations? Just be a a good environmentalist overall. I mean, you want to be able to conserve the resources that you use. If you go on vacation, you know, if you go to a national park or something like that, make sure you follow their rules, what, what they have set up to keep yourself and the animals safe. And, you know, just be conscious of your everyday actions and help to spread that message to others. That's really good information, thank you. They are called uh, grizzly bears. Someone um, gave them that name because the hair on their back and the top of their shoulders, even down some of their arms, has that, someone called it a grizzled appearance. But they're actually brown bears. Brown bears is a whole family of the bear species. Grizzlies is a subspecies of that. Okay. That's how they got their name. Brown bears can actually rival polar bears in their size. Could be over 1,000, even over 1,200 pounds. Really? Polar bears are usually the largest of the of the bear family of the land-based bears and grizzlies can sometimes be as big. Something unique that's happening in the world is with our climate changing polar bears and brown bears might be interacting more out in the wild where brown bears are able to access areas that they haven't ever been before because of the climate changing and things are warming, maybe the ice isn't forming as much, so brown bears can get into those territories where it's normally polar bear country. Sure. So that's something interesting how we can see how 
that human actions can, can affect how the animals are then adapting to that. If anyone has any questions from our Facebook viewers, it doesn't look like I have any questions at this moment. Betsy, do you have a favorite story you want to share about them? Uh, I mean, I just bears are one of my favorites. I've always loved bears. They're just so smart, so clever, so strong, beautiful animals. They have such an iconic feel, you know, to the zoo, to the country. Um, one thing that I always like to share with people is bears that snore, and they snore <laughs> really loudly. <laughs> And it's really kind of funny. And they do that weird little snore noise at the end. That's so just when they snore very too. cute. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> very cute. And when they get really loud and they soar, it kind of like vibrates your sternum. I mean, they're just, they're really funny guys. Well, I appreciate your time with us today, Betsy. You're welcome. Come on out and see the bears. Even on a hot day, they're, yeah. they're out here hanging out, they having a good time. Are. They definitely are. So thanks so much for joining us for this dose of virtual vitamin D. Again, sponsored by Meyer, who we're grateful for, for their continued support to be able to provide these education programs free to our public. Thank Have you. Have a great day. Bye. Bye.